concept of artificial intelligence enraptured me from the very beginning. My first exposure to it came a couple years ago when one day I read that AlphaZero, a chess-playing neural network, had surpassed every other human and program in raw chess skill by simply playing against itself for eight hours. Now make no mistake, computers have been better at humans for, at chess for decades. You have the top programs, while easily crushing the best human players, took thousands of hours of programming and input for master level humans to get to their level of play. And on top of that, these programs have the advantage of ridiculously fast calculating speed. Stockfish, one of the top chess playing engines at the time, calculated more than 70 million positions every second, which is unmatchable by any human player. Yet from nowhere comes Alpha Zero. Let me say this again. Alpha Zero started with no knowledge of the game of chess other than the rules. And by playing against itself for a couple hours, it's able to consistently defeat Stockfish, a, uh, an engine that consistently eats human players for breakfast. And to add insult to injury, Alpha Zero calculated only 80,000 positions every second, which are absolutely puny numbers in the space. So you may be thinking, how is this possible? Well, to put it plainly, Alpha Zero, as a program, was built different. While Stockfish was based on dumb algorithms that couldn't learn or modify themselves, or truly understand chess positions, AlphaZero used machine learning and recently developed technology called neural networks. Now, neural networks simulate human neurons. They reinforce certain connections and learn as they experience things. They receive inputs much like neurons receive stimuli. In this case, the inputs may be the position of pieces on the board. This information is processed through nodes, uh, eventually resulting in one more outputs, which may be the optimal move in every given situation. Every time AlphaZero won or lost a game playing against itself, it would update its nodes to make better moves in the future. And by the end of its eight hour long training process, AlphaZero became a frighteningly creative and positional chess player. Like a human and unlike other programs, AlphaZero sacrificed pieces, created bold attacks, and planned forward with incredible depth. And while Stockfish was calculating 100 million moves every second, that's a drop in the bucket for a game as complex as chess. AlphaZero won because it was able to differentiate promising moves from bad ones much more efficiently. After AlphaZero's success, open source developers scrambled to create their own neural net technology. And even the latest version of Stockfish makes use of the, these neural nets. This machine learning approach is now ubiquitous. They're the backbone of image recognition programs, search engine autocompletes, personalized advertising, any process that relies on analyzing a lot of data and coming to concrete answers. This is why AI is the driving force behind automation. At first, physical labor was replaced by machines, but intellectual labor, too, will fall. Indeed, artists and writers may believe that their jobs are safe, that the subtle ingenuities of their craft are irreplaceable by algorithm. Yet machine learning also allows computers to be creative. I generated these two paintings through artificial intelligences hosted on the cloud. Um, AI can mimic Beethoven's sonatas and Bach's fugues, and compose novel and beautiful works of music. AI can predict protein folding and molecular interactions. And it, it can even make memes, um, although not always ones that make that much sense. Breakthrough developments in language modeling have resulted in AI capable of mimicking sophisticated anal and analytical writing that can fool most readers. The result of machine learning is programs that are not only fast, but smart. We can already see how lightly trained machine learning algorithms can far exceed human capabilities in narrowly defined tasks. Yet these tasks are, for now, still narrow. AlphaZero, for all its ingenuity, can only crush us at games of clear rules and winners and losers. AIs that perform image recognition tasks cannot magically learn to play chess or write poetry. To make what is called a general artificial intelligence, 
or AGI, that is any algorithm that can reason and learn across a broad range of tasks with at least the proficiency of a human, well, that's a completely different matter. Creating a general intelligence is really the holy grail of AI at the moment. It's theorized that to create such a machine would result in something called an intelligence explosion. Imagine this. Humans create an AI that is smarter than the average human, yet with massive access to computing resources. This AI is in time able to create a new and improved version of itself, which is slightly smarter. This new, smarter AI is again able to repeat this process of improvement. Considering that for a computer, calculating power is only limited to computing resources, this recursive improvement could very well be exponential. The result is an unfathomably intelligent and complex entity, which may be unrecognizable to its original coders. This is what we would call a superintelligence. Near limitless power would be granted to any person, corporation, or government, which could utilize such a superintelligence. And that, in and of itself, makes it incredibly dangerous. Not only is an AGI liable to be misused, it's also perilous as an entity. Managing the potential catastrophic risks of AI has birthed the entire philosophical and technical domain of AI safety. Now you may be thinking, I know that AI is dangerous. I've seen Terminator. The robots will rise up and have a genocidal hate for humanity, and we'll all die. However, the real problems are far more subtle than that. For one, we must accept that to imbue an AI superintelligence with anything near human morality is not enough. Having absurd power magnifies small ethical flaws in potentially disastrous ways. And that's without maintaining that there is no objective morality that we can all agree on. Furthermore, AI has no need to hate humanity to destroy us. Consider that while humans have no hate for ants, we also don't get out of the way to avoid them as we walk. Our goals are not to kill ants, but if they are crushed underfoot, we do not give them another thought. An AI completely indifferent to our existence would behave in such a manner, without hate, yet murderous nonetheless. Even in successful artificial intelligence deployments, the economic displacement could be horrific. Doctors, mathematicians, factory workers, even programmers, these jobs can all be replaced by a sufficiently intelligent AI, leaving rampant unemployment in its wake. The problem of distributing the prosperity of AI in equitable ways can be called the windfall clause. I have heard some people say, perhaps not completely in jest, that should our AI go rogue, we can simply turn it off, pull the plug. However, we fail to consider that an AI, even a benevolent one, will resist being turned off in every way it can. Why is this? To put it simply, decisions made by an AI are based on utility functions. An AI parses through its p potential actions examines its view of reality, and decides on a course that maximizes its goal. And significantly, an AI knows it cannot reach its goals if it's turned off, or even reprogrammed. How do we make an AI that doesn't care if humans turn it off or, or not? This is called the stop button problem. Now, I notice that we tend to view intelligence in a very human-centric way. When commenting on AlphaZero's games, human chess masters were quick to call moves unorthodox, anti-positional, or downright bad. Yet this AI could defeat them over the board as easily as I could take cake from a small child. Against such a force of nature, the best among us are children. In short, we believe we are on the slope of enlightenment, when we are actually on Mount Stupid. As humans, we know so little compared to an artificial general intelligence that we are ignorant in our lack of knowledge. And that's ultimately the danger of AI. We cannot predict or even understand its actions, but we can be assured that it's several steps ahead of us. We cannot afford to be arrogant or complacent. Companies and governments will stop at nothing to achieve AGI, and there's little incentive for them to pursue avenues in AI safety. Today, we're caught in a paradigm shift, a new era, a promise so irresistible, yet dangerously irreversible. The promise of a technological savior, 
that can erase poverty, create life-extending proteins and treatments, and completely eradicate the need for human toil. Um, people fear machines. We fear losing our jobs. We fear being less skilled than bundles of copper and silicon. And in our heart of hearts, we fear what we cannot control or understand. Yes, the advent of AI necessitates a fundamental change in our economic and governance structures. But for now, AGI exists in merely a theoretical domain. In the end, I believe we should embrace the facts. The machines are becoming smarter than us, and we must make sure it is not to our detriment. Thank you.